part of the pleasure in so many of these objects was in the decipherment. And so they needed to have a certain threshold of difficulty. You had to be initiated into a particular culture and education. And one insight that we have into the potential illegibility or ambivalence of symbols comes from the trial for treason of the Earl of Surrey. And he had a portrait painted with a broken column in the background. And in his trial, he was accused of using that column to symbolize Henry VIII's loss of potency, let's say, as a monarch and as a man. And in, he argued in his defense in the courtroom that it was actually a reflection on his own disempowerment and melancholy. And so we have there a really interesting moment of reception of Tudor art where contemporaries are looking at the same portrait and offering very different readings of it. But I do think it's it's fair to say, as Adam says, if you were part of that class and that education, you had been schooled in the sort of approach of imprezi and so forth. So there would be this awareness that there is a, a message there to be unpicked and deciphered. And so part of the, the game, the fun, is deciding what the message is. Well, and, and there are certain objects like the so-called Persian lady portrait by Marcus Carrots the Younger, which have never had a satisfactory resolution or reading. I think if we knew who she was, then we could probably look at her coat of arms, at her own writings or circumstances, and come up with a plausible interpretation. But since we don't have her identity, it's been a series of dead ends and hypotheticals, some more persuasive than others. But so much in that portrait remains a complete mystery. One of the the portraits I really enjoyed spending a little bit more time with was um, the early portrait of Edward as a child. It was a New Year's gift from Holbein himself. And we have the New Year's gift role in the show. That particular court ritual is, is a really major theme. And it explains so much about the portrait, of course, you know, why he is collaborating with this humanist poet to have a very flattering inscription, telling the young prince to emulate his father, but also things like this green cloth covering the parapet in the foreground. It turns out that Henry VIII's New Year's gifts would actually be displayed on trestle tables covered in green fabric. So he's made a playful reference to that convention by presenting the prince as, as a gift to his father. And I'd also say, speaking to, as Yonkyu, as you were saying, this the composition of him set behind the parapet, one of those sort of happy moments with the exhibition bringing together so much art from the period in different media is across from the Holbein portrait of, of the baby Edward, we have a small devotional tapestry of the infant Christ. And he's also seated in front of a with in front of him a little parapet with a cloth of honor hanging down. And it's the same sort of scale, his hands raised in a blessing gesture. But it's extraordinary seeing the the parallels between the two. And it's something that indeed had never occurred to me when I was originally researching those small scale devotional tapestries of the, the infant Christ uh, uh, squeezing the mystic grapes. But when you see them together, you think, yes, an educated 16th century audience would have picked up on those visual cues perhaps much more readily than we do today. <laughs> 